She had some, you know, quote unquote abdominal pain, which had been very difficult to get a handle on. She had seen many, many different doctors. The trend had been that this was something inside the abdomen or pelvis, so an internal source of the problem. I think she had undergone at least two or maybe more um, laparoscopic procedures trying to figure out the source of the pain and to, to address endometriosis concerns and, so, and stuff like that, but none of that helped her. When she came to see me, the day she came in, she was almost non-ambulatory um, because this pain just had her kind of bent over. I came into the room and I saw her and started to evaluate her and it was pretty clear um, right from her description that she was what we were dealing with was a problem within the anterior abdominal wall itself. So I think the one advantage I had over all these other physicians was simply that I understand peripheral nerve anatomy. And unfortunately, that's not something that doctors learn at any stage in their education. Pain is not something that's given a lot of thought in medical school or in training. Um, you know, I initially trained as a general and trauma surgeon. And the one rule of thumb that you were, that were, was drummed into your head was never operate for pain. Meaning, if you can't see an actual problem, something's not showing up on the CT or somebody has a knife sticking in their abdomen or something, don't ever operate for somebody who just comes in and complains of pain. And all these patients probably fall into the realm of peripheral nerve pathology because peripheral nerve damage is the pain that can't be seen by any of the techniques that we have today for sort of evaluating those problems. basically a condition where little nerves that are traveling from the spine and coming around to the midline of the abdomen become entrapped at some point in the anterior abdominal wall, usually either in the lateral rectus sheath or perhaps where they're coming up through the rectus abdominis muscle or piercing the anterior rectus sheath. Any of those locations can be a, a source of entrapment for these little nerves and can cause horrible, horrible pain. I knew that there was at least one nerve. Now, the nerve anatomy in this area can be highly variable. So, you know, if you make the same incision at the same level in 10 different people, you might have 10 slightly different kind of configurations of how the nerve is. Like in, in Sarah's case, there was two nerves probably less than a centimeter apart. And so you don't sit there and look at the nerve and flip a coin and say, I think this is the problem and that one's okay. You kind of go scorched earth. And so I took out both little nerves. Both of them were entrapped or stuck in the lateral rectus sheath. I looked above and below and there was really nothing close that could have accounted for the pain, which was very focal, except these two nerves, it was too close to really tell. So, you know, you want to err on the side of being aggressive and, and trying to get a good outcome for the patient. So you take out both those nerves in that case. As peripheral nerve problems go, this is one of the more simple ones. And but unfortunately, these people will suffer for years because Either they don't get the correct diagnosis, and then even if they do, nobody at that point really knows what to do for them. Anybody that has, yeah, the AC, NES diagnosis can be cured with a relatively simple outpatient surgical procedure.